in an article in Teaching Children Mathematics from March 2011, Cheryl Stump expresses the importance of teaching algebraic reasoning in uh, K through 12 or pre-K through 12. And the four major themes are understanding patterns, relations, and functions. Number two, representing and analyzing mathematical situations and structures using algebraic symbols. Number three, using mathematical models to represent and understand quantitative relationships. And number four, analyzing change in various contexts. Some curricular practice does not treat algebra as an isolated course. And that's what we want to get away from is saying algebra is a course that you take in eighth grade or high school. But algebra is a concept that begins in pre-K. So students have to learn algebraic reasoning in the elementary school. And there's been some conflict on exactly what that means. And so KPUT in 2008 said that first, it's generalization and the expression of generalizations. So you focus on a pattern and then you focus on symbolic manipulation. So it is recommended, strongly encouraged by the standards, principles and standards for school mathematics by the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics, that we include algebra, patterns, functions, K through 12. Now, what kinds of things can we do? First of all, we can look at some graphs and tell a story about them. What's happening here in this graph in terms of speed and time elapsed? So the x-axis is at time, the y-axis is speed, and if you have a horizontal line, that means as time increases, the speed is remaining constant. So it's set on speed control. It's going 55 miles an hour, or 65 or 70, down the interstate where you have your cruise control on. All right, if we look at this graph, we have as time passes, the speed is decreasing. So maybe they have put the brakes on and they're stopping at a red light. So when the light or when the line comes to here, that means that it has stopped. Time still goes, but the vehicle has stopped. Now, if you're looking at a line like this, it might be that you're driving on a curvy road where you can speed up and then you have to slow down then you speed up and then you have to slow down and if you notice that the rate of the line falling is greater here that means that you're braking more quickly you're speeding up less quickly than you did here you're beginning to level off in terms of speeding up and slowing down. Now in this graph, time is passing. You are at a constant speed and suddenly you stop. So this would mean that it isn't a slowing down stop like we did here, but it is an abrupt stop like you ran into a tree.
Now in this graph, this is showing a man riding on a Ferris wheel. So notice time is passing, but this now is distance from the ground. So he's up high, then he begins to come low, then he's up high, and then he comes low. He's making circles. His time is continuing to pass, but his distance from the ground is changing. Now, let's go back up to the first group of graphs and a train pulls into a station and lets off its passengers. So which one of these would represent that? Well, it would be B, because there would be a slowing down and then a stop. All right, now on two, if we look at a man riding a Ferris wheel, this one can't be because notice how these are looping. This is showing that time is going backwards and then he's coming back up and then time is going backwards as he comes back up. And you know that that can happen in terms of time. Now, if we look at this graph, he begins on the ground, he goes up high, then he comes back to the ground, he goes up high, and he comes back. And this would be the one that would represent the Ferris wheel, not this one, because this is showing time going backwards. Now the reason this would not is because a Ferris wheel will take you up the same height each time. And then this is the same problem as over here. As you loop and come back, you're reversing time, and that that's not going to work out so well. Now, let's look at this. A woman climbs a hill at a steady pace and then return starts to return down one side. Or starts to run down side, I'm sorry. A woman climbs a hill at a steady pace and then starts to run down one side. So she's climbing at a steady pace and then she's running back. So notice this line is steeper than the steady pace. Time is elapsing but you reach a point and then you come back to where you start. Okay, on this one we're looking at a child swings on a swing. I believe it would be this one because you're starting out a little bit above the ground and then as you begin Typically, you don't go as high as you do toward the, you know, once you get into swinging, it takes you a little bit to get up to the top or as, as high as you would go. Okay, on the last one, a child climbs up a slide and then slides down. So maybe this one, they go up the steps, they're at the landing, and then they slide back down.
<clears throat> okay, if we look at these graphs, it's showing that Sandra started out with $43 and she continued to feed quarters into a slot machine and um, assuming that she never wins which of these graphs would represent her situation Well, this graph shows an upward trend, which means that at some point she won some money. So we can eliminate E. We can eliminate D because this means that she kept $43 always. We can eliminate C because this shows an increase in money over number of tries. So we're looking at these two and what we have to decide is <clears throat> each time she's losing a quarter. So she has after one try she has $42.75. Well, after 10 tries, she's lost $2.50. So after 10 tries, she would have $40.50. So which one of these would represent $40.50 after 10 tries? Well, this line is too steep because after 10 tries she has less than thirty dollars and so we would have to choose A as being the best example alright now let's look at another graph in this scenario, Richard types for three minutes at the rate of 35 words per minute. He takes a two minute break and then types for three more minutes at the rate of 20 words per minute. The graphs below show time on the horizontal axis and the number of words on the vertical axis. So which graph represents Richard's time at the typewriter? So let's look at it. He types for three minutes at a rate of 35 words per minute. So after two minutes, he would have typed 70 words. and after three minutes he would type a hundred five words now the horizontal line means for this two minute break from three minutes to five 
he has no words. He still has the same amount of words that he had. And then he begins typing again at 20 words per minute. So at 5 minutes, he had 105 words. 20 more would be 125 words. So I believe it is D. Now the reason it would not be A is when from 0 to 3 minutes, he did not have over 120 words typed. He only had 3 times 35, which would be 105. Now, what I like to do is give a graph and have the students make up what this could be about. So if the x-axis shows time in seconds, and this shows an elevator, what's happening to that elevator. From 0 to 10 seconds, it's stuck on the first floor. Then from 10 to 20 seconds, it rises to the second floor. And from 20 to 30 seconds, it's stuck on the second floor. Then from 30 to 50 seconds, it's rising rapidly to the sixth floor. And then from 50 to 70, it's on the sixth floor. Another thing that I like to have students do is take a graph and draw what happened to them on the way to school that day in terms of stopping at red lights or stopping at stop signs um, when they travel faster or slower or you know have them draw their own graph modeling a situation If you have in your classroom uh, some um, a ranger or um, equipment that you can hook up that will monitor students' paths and then graph it on a graphing calculator, you can have the students walk and it will monitor their walk, turn it into an equation, and then graph it. So this would represent a student that time passed, but they stood still until here, and then they walked rapidly and then stopped. Now this would represent a student walking rapidly and then more slowly. This would represent a student walking rapidly, stopping, and coming back to where they started. Now this would not, not be um, a situation that would represent a graph because 
this shows that a student is moving well now wait maybe if you have two students moving like if a student started up here and a student started here and they met that's what this could be but one student walking could not make this because if one student's walking you would go to this point and back but it would mean that time would reverse and that can't uh, be but if you had two students a student here and a student here and they walked until they met it would be the only way that that could be uh, considered as an acceptable graph so this one would be not correct so here we're going to walk stop maybe jump and go again here we walk fast turn around and come back and then walk fast we walk fast we stop and then we walk fast now this one can't be because this shows that you're going back in time and that's not an acceptable graph. All right, I'm going to give you this graph, and I want you to write me a story about what could be happening in this graph. You can upload that into Blackboard.